unwarranted. Unnecessary. These guys watch too many movies. Never show the badge, never lend me my rights, nothing. They think they're gangbusters. 37 guys to pick up one little guy. It's ridiculous. Rip me apart like I'm some sort of fool. Never resisted. Had 20 guns pointed at me for no reason. State, uh, Robert J. Carroll, uh, Deputy Attorney General for the uh, Division of Criminal Justice for the Organized Crime and Racketeering Bureau. Uh, Frank Luciano, <coughs> representing the defendant. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have Mr. Beerman from my office with me. Les Leslie M. Beerman. <coughs> Your Honor, uh, before the court today is Mr. Richard Klinsky. He was arrested uh, early this morning uh, by members of the New Jersey State Police, the Division of Criminal Justice, uh, and several other agencies uh, on numerous complaints uh, which had been submitted to the court and were executed today. Uh, those complaints uh, I have now to submit to the court for review uh, consistent with defendant's first appearance before the court. For the record, Your Honor, Mr. Lucian, uh, it's quite a copy. I'll acknowledge the receipt. Just to see what we can get. If you just do the benefit of giving me the yes. numbers on each of the items that we have in here. I'm asking Yes, sir. I have a complaint bearing number 43976. I have a complaint. A second complaint bearing number 43992. Yes, sir, I have that. I have another complaint bearing number 43981. Yes, I do. I have another bearing number 43982. Yes, I have that. I have another bearing number 43983. Yes, sir. Another bearing number 43985. I have that one. Another bearing number 43986. I have that one. Another bearing number 43989. I have that one. Another bearing 43991. I have that one. And the last one bearing number 43988. I have that one. No, you see? You see yes, sir. No, we'll the reading of the complaint, Your Honor, and I'll acknowledge you see it the same. I'll give you on a bail application. Well, now, if you're not pleased, before the uh, uh, bail application is made, uh, I was to place on the record, uh, first of all, that uh, this gentleman contacted my office, I believe, when he was arrested this morning, uh, sometime around 11 o'clock. I've had a very uh, brief period of time in which to uh, discuss this matter with him. It is my understanding that the uh, state uh, <clears throat> wishes to not only make a bail application, but in addition to that, to present some evidentiary material uh, to the court. I'm I got to. I'm going to ask for a proper. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask for a proper. 
Your Honor, because I'm saying this as a result of our discussions. I'm going to ask for a yes. proper only. I'll give you one of the proffers. Tell me what you have. I see that you have some electronic equipment set up. Tell me what the purpose of it is. I do, Your Honor. Your Honor, uh, the defendant stands accused of numerous criminal complaints, uh, inclusive of which uh, are five murder charges. Three of those murder charges uh, are uh, of one particular motive, which I would submit to the court, uh, has to do with a robbery motive, and two others have to do with the murder of accomplices. Uh, Mr. Kuklinski is exposed uh, to a tremendous amount of custodial time. He is also subject to uh, two death penalty uh, uh, sentences as a result of, of the commission of those crimes. Uh, moreover, I there. Are you asking, and did I miss whether or not these are possible offenses or not? No, Your Honor, I, I can advise the court that he has capital exposure on two of those charges. Uh, I am not at this point uh, prepared to go any further as to that particular uh, matter. Uh, however, uh, he, is, he is facing five separate murder charges. Uh, additionally, he has uh, six weapons charges, uh, and today alone, uh, an additional five charges uh, relating to an attempted murder scheme, an attempted robbery scheme, were also lodged against him. Uh, in total, he has ten complaints, uh, which cover approximately 19 different charges. Uh, he is facing uh, roughly 300 years uh, in custodial time exposure, uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars of fines, and obviously the uh, most serious penalty of all, the death penalty. Um, what I would purport, propose to do to the court today, uh, because of the extensive uh, amount of material that is contained in these complaints, is to give a very brief factual uh, proffer to the court concerning uh, what some of these charges uh, involve, that is, identify the victim, uh, the particular substance of the charge against Mr. Kuklinski, and also some information concerning uh, the extent of the proof which is directly relevant to uh, the likelihood of conviction uh, as it relates to Mr. Kuklinski. Uh, that last element, Your Honor, the state is prepared and feels that uh, it is indeed necessary in light of the seriousness of the charges uh, and quite candidly the dangerous, dangerousness of this man uh, that we make an extensive record at this point uh, on the, uh, the bail application. Uh, to that end, uh, I have prepared uh, a brief factual background uh, on the issue of bail, uh, and I would, with the court's permission, proceed uh, to go through uh, and touch upon the different charges which Mr. Kuklinski is facing. I have a couple of questions. Yes, sir. You are not saying that the court is the rule that he's not entitled to bail because you're not making an application Complaints are not a capital Correct. Yes, Your Honor. Say it another way. You're saying Mr. Kuklinski is bailable today. Yes, I am. Okay. I am not going to hear the case. I'll make it proper so as to familiarize myself, and then I'll ask you to make my suggestion. Your Honor, if I could be heard on that point, um, it's the state's position that uh, the Evidence which the state has uh, is indeed uh, overwhelming and indeed uh, bears directly upon the likelihood of conviction of this defendant. Uh, because that is an important component of the bail uh, consideration. It's a bail consideration that we're dealing with a capital matter of any standard rule. I don't want to make my argument anything with you. Right. You made the point on the record. Obviously, there can only be another application for bail, uh, increased bail, reduction of bail, and those small parties do at another time. The purpose of today is for the first appearance and to set bail. I'm prepared to hear you on a proper. I will not hear any evidence at this point. Well, you want if I could start with my proper? Go right ahead. You want to be heard if I don't refer to Mr. Lucian? Well, if you want to please, the question, uh, the factual proper, I don't believe is necessary yet. We have to be realistic. Uh, somehow or other, the media was advised uh, of these proceedings. They're all here. Uh, of course, they will be apprised of uh, what the state's case is. Uh, and according to the prosecutor, he's not only going to do that, but he's going to, uh, uh, in extenso, uh, set out what the factual matrix of this case is, insofar as they're concerned. Just so you know, that's only one small item of setting bail 
The prosecutor's under the impression that if he says something and so, then it is so. And that, th that therefore, uh, you perhaps can set bail merely because he said so. Well, there's been many cases. I can set bail and the rule of law, and you well know how to get back to court for future hearing if you're so sorry for the reduction. But Judge, he's going to do a lot of harm here today, and that's why he has the media here, and that's why he wants to make a factual proffer. He you want, knows, you want he to knows, take with he Mr. knows Mr. that by saying this, the defendant is going to be at a disadvantage. Stop. Now it's a spot. Your Honor, first charge relating to The murder of George Maliban. Mr. Maliban is from Huntington, Pennsylvania, formerly was. On January 31st, Your Honor, 1980, Mr. Maliban uh, was in fact uh, traveling to New Jersey with Richard Kaplinsky. The purpose of this travel was to consummate a business deal involving sale of videotapes by Mr. Kuklinski to Mr. Maliban. Mr. Maliban was traveling with $27,000 in cash, and there was evidence also that he owed, that Mr. Kuklinski owed Mr. Maliban approximately $35,000 in additional monies. Evidence which the state has established that Mr. Kuklinski has in, did in fact murder George Maliban as Several days after Mr. Maliban had traveled with Mr. Kuklinski to New Jersey, Mr. Maliban's body was in fact found stuffed into a 55-gallon drum. He had been shot numerous times. There's evidence, Your Honor, which I will get to in a few moments, which will further uh, document that particular charge. On July 1st, 1981, Mr. Louis Mazgay, also of Pennsylvania, traveled to New Jersey to meet with Richard Kuklinski, also to consummate a business deal, ostensibly about videotapes. Mr. Mazgay was driving a van which had secreted in a door panel the believed sum of $95,000 to effectuate the purchase of the videotapes. Mr. Mazgay was last seen alive on July 1st, 19. 81, immediately prior to a meeting with Mr. Kuklinski in the state of New Jersey. Subsequently, approximately two and one quarter years later, Mr. Mazgay's partially decomposed body was found in Orangetown, Rockland County, New York. It was wrapped in several layers of plastic bags. It was bound with tape and rope. And Mr. Mazgay had been shot in the head and literally dumped at that location. Evidence that the state has establishes Mr. Kuklinski's involvement in that case and further establishes that Mr. Kuklinski stored Mr. Mazgay's body in a freezer or refrigerated compartment for an extended period of time prior to the discovery of that body. A third victim, and Mr. Paul Hoffman, from Cliffside Park, New Jersey, disappeared on April 29, 1982. He, too, was to complete a business deal, which the evidence of the state uh, establishes was to be with Mr. Kuklinski. And he, too, has obviously disappeared, and he has not, his body has not yet been found. When Mr. Hoffman disappeared, he was carrying $22,000 in cash prior to a meeting. The next murder involves a Mr. Gary Smith of Highland Lakes, New Jersey. On December 26, 1982, Gary Smith's body was found stuffed under a platform bed in the York Motel in North Bergen, New Jersey. Evidence gathered by the state has established that Gary Smith was murdered by Richard Kuklinski and Daniel Detner. Mr. Kuklinski had placed a poisonous substance on a hamburger which Mr. Smith had ingested. Thereafter, with Smith helpless and comatose, Danny Deckner strangled Gary Smith with a lamp cord. The fifth murder 
involves the murder of Danny Detner. On May 14, 1982, the body of Daniel Detner was discovered in a wooded area in West Milford, New Jersey. The body, which was wrapped in plastic bags and bound with tape, was badly decomposed due to excessive exposure to the weather, as well as animal and insect feeding. The evidence established by the state that Richard Kuklinski also murdered Daniel Detner. Your Honor, the evidence in this case, which I would submit goes directly to the issue of the likelihood of conviction, stems not only from substantive evidence that was found at the scenes and uncovered during the course of the investigations of these homicides, but most importantly involves tape-recorded information uh, that was made within the last four months. That information was gathered by an undercover Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms agent who, in discussions with Mr. Kuklinski concerning the commission of yet another murder, which I might add he is arrested for today, an attempted murder that is, Mr. Kuklinski graphically and candidly discussed methods of murdering individuals using cyanide, using, as he termed it, lead, using steel, and he, on many, many occasions, acknowledged having used these methods in the killing of human beings. This technique of having the undercover agent discuss with Kuklinski method, the methodology of killing human beings was successful as to the specific five homicides for which he is charged today. Among those tape recordings are tapes which the state, as I've indicated, has available to play for the court today. Comments made on those tapes contain such what I would term outrageously barbaric statements about how uh, individuals can be killed using poisons and other tools of the killing trade. I am incorporating those in the comments I've given and the comments I will also am about to give. I'm looking for an excess, I'm looking for two million dollars, Your Honor. If Your Honor, please. Uh, well, if Your Honor, please, I think he's uh, he said enough already. I think he said more than a... Uh, yes, yes, sir. I'm just addressing my... I'm just replying to you. I don't think under any circumstances was he permissible to say what he did say in court. And I've never heard, I've been a lawyer 36 years and I had many murder cases, but I never heard a prosecutor yet state factually what he has said in order to influence the court. My, Two million dollars is ridiculous, if you're right. Absolutely ridiculous. First of all, uh, there's supposed to be a presumption of innocence. I don't think this gentleman uh, who represents the state even recognizes I take that. exception to something. Well, well, let me finish, please. There's supposed to be a presumption of innocence in these cases, if you're pleased to begin with. And this factual matrix that he just gave you, which I believe not only was unnecessary and uncalled for, but in my opinion, should not have been uh, stated by an attorney general at a bail hearing and could only have been said for the purpose of uh, prejudicing you against the defendant and influencing you in setting high bail. What he has adverted to is only one segment of the bail setting process. Your Honor has the rule before you. The rule says, first of all, there's a presumption of innocence. Secondly, that in setting bail, the court should determine <coughs> What is an address which is set forth on the complaint at 169 Sunset Street in Dumont for 15 years? He lives there with his wife. He has three children. Uh, each one, one of his ch children goes to Bergen Catholic High School. The other two children were born and educated uh, in the Bergen County area. Uh, they, all three children live at home. He lives there with his wife. He's been married 25 years. Your Honor, please. He has been gainfully employed, and he is gainfully employed at the present time. It is my understanding from what the defendant told me 
that he has not been arrested or charged or convicted for any crime during the last 20 years, and that any charges that he did have uh, revert back to some period of time uh, when he was a much younger individual, and they are not of any serious nature. Now, the rule specifically says that you are to consider the four elements, namely the background of the defendant, the presumption of innocence, the admonition against unnecessary sureties, and that goes directly to this preposterous request for $2 million, and the fact that, that the defendant has roots in the community, better roots than many defendants who come before the court on this kind of a charge or any charge, and that he therefore is likely to appear in court. Your Honor, please, these police came to his premises this morning. <coughs> they they actually jumped on his wife, knocked her to the ground, and stood on her. She made no attempt to get away. He made no attempt to get away. He uh, was arrested and brought down here to jail, and there is absolutely no indication in any of his background that he intended to leave the jurisdiction at any time. As a matter of fact, these cases go back to 1980, as adverted to by the prosecutor, then it's, there is a substantial consideration that you should give to the fact that the defendant has remained in this jurisdiction continuously for the last six years, at least since the charges uh, were supposed to have, uh, during a period of time, these charges have supposed to have been uh, originated, according to the prosecutor. Judge Cialino, I think a great deal of damage has been done already in this case. And I think the worst thing that can be done in light of the fact that everything the prosecutor said is going to go into the media and is going to prevent my trying from getting a fair trial, the worst thing that can be done is to set unconscionable and unnecessarily high bail. I don't think bail should be high. I think it should be reasonable. I have a feeling that the prosecutor has got a lot of information from the uh, lips of a so-called informant. And if you want to please... Uh, uh, I would be uh, very happy to see exactly what their evidence is at the time of trial. Judge, they may be surprised. This prosecutor may think he's going to win these cases. He may end up losing. And I hope he does, especially after what he said here in court, Your Honor. Your Honor, I uh, initially, if I may, respond to the court's uh, concern as to uh, the, or actually Mr. Luciani's concern about the roots of Mr. Kuklinski uh, in the community and also the likelihood of him to flee the jurisdiction. Uh, the facts, as Mr. Uh, Luciani has represented, with all due respect, uh, are inaccurate. Uh, Mr. Kuklinski was, in fact, arrested uh, near his residence. Uh, he did not submit voluntarily. He, in fact, engaged in a car uh, chase, uh, which involved uh, jumping curbs and going onto people's lawns. Uh, Mr. Kuklinski had to be subdued at that point. Uh, moreover, uh, going back on Mr. Kuklinski's history, uh, as Mr. Luciani has indicated, uh, he has been here continuously since 1980 when these murders are uh, uh, they commenced, but that is inaccurate. Uh, evidence which we have uncovered indicates that Mr. Kuklinski uh, travels, in fact, to Switzerland on frequent occasions. Uh, he has, in fact, recently been placing uh, uh, air, airline flight reservations uh, with Swiss Air to go to Switzerland. Uh, I further can represent to the court in recent uh, tape-recorded conversations Mr. Kuklinski has made statements that he has one more problem to take care of, one more problem he identifies as an informant. After he does that, he's going to retire, that he has money out of the country. He indicates this candidly to our undercover agent. These are taped statements, Your Honor. And these are not my assertions. The, state, the, the, the statements I've made today, we are prepared to back up with tape recordings. Uh, the court has, has, has made its ruling, and of course I'll abide by it. Uh, but this is not my whim. This is not my comments or my opinion. These are the facts. Uh, I also might add that Mr. Kuklinski uh, in 1984 declared bankruptcy. Uh, I believe the figure was $170,000, uh, which I would submit would go to uh, his roots in the community. Uh, I did not hear Mr. Luciani indicate his present employment, if any. Uh, I am, uh, the facts which are aware uh, that are, have been made known to me uh, and again, I would, I would most emphatically state from the defendant's own mouth that he is not, uh, in fact, a good subject for bail, but in fact is a, is a tremendous danger that he will flee this jurisdiction, indeed the country, to avoid prosecution. Judge Ware, most respectfully, Your Honor, this is important. Most respectfully, I just wish you'd listen one moment more because I think my client already uh, is in a, uh, uh, has suffered a great deal of harm. And, 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 and the worst uh, thing that could happen to him is uh, that your honor, uh, because of the uh, circumstances of this hearing, sets in proper bail. This prosecutor didn't in any way 
indicate that there's anything in this case to show the defendant left this jurisdiction on any permanent basis. It's very strange that if this man is supposed to have committed five murders in this area, that he continues to live in, in, in uh, Dumont where he was arrested this morning. And if you're on it, please, if there was a chase, and if he resisted, it was because a group of Plains clothesmen jumped out of cars with their guns drawn and proceeded to pummel him and pummel his wife. They actually knocked his wife to the ground. He didn't know whether he was being confronted by a group of criminals or by police. They didn't even identify themselves initially. It wasn't until after she was knocked to the ground and after he was handcuffed that they finally said they were policemen. Now, Judge Celino, I beg of you, in light of the circumstance of this case, what does bankruptcy have to do with an appearance at the day uh, of court? And what, uh, and, and what uh, uh, does it have to do that the defendant made a trip to Switzerland? He owns this house. He has three children who live with his wife and himself here in Bergen County. There is no reason, Judge Celino, why bail shouldn't be reasonable under these circumstances. And if what I said about him not being arrested in 20 years, and if what I said about him was untrue, then if you're on it, please, the prosecutor hasn't uh, challenged that contention. And I say, this defendant stands before you, Judge Cialino, entitled to reasonable bail, and I ask you to afford it to him. So much more we could say. The only other information, Your Honor, is that there are some additional complaints which will be lodged uh, as soon as they're prepared before the court. Okay. The same statement going to be made by the prosecutor at the time those complaints are lodged? Well, if Your Honor, please. Uh, no, I won't. I'm not saying anything. Uh, of course, uh, you will permit me to have another bail hearing. Will you not judge upon that? And, and will I be permitted? And will Your Honor set this matter down for a probable cause hearing if I so request it? Just by notice to yourself notice and the attorney general. Everyone in the courtroom, please remain where you are seated. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I have no other matter. Well, how Judge the wife is being held. I have no other matter before me. Complaints being, Complaints being prepared. I have no other matter before me now other than in that proceedings to the judge and proceedings. Will you be kind enough, Judge, to direct the prosecutor to uh, bring this matter on before the court as soon as the complaints are given to the wife? Thank, thanks very much, Your Honor. Okay, I'm fine. Yeah. We uh, will get the complaints. I don't have them all in order. Yeah, well, she's got to get back to her kids. What's the complaint on a borrower?